milkweed butterfly plant. You know, there's a couple reasons to have plants like this. Not only because they're beautiful and because they're drought tolerant and they resist deer and they attract butterflies. But guess what? Butterflies need these. Pollinators need these. We've, you know, done so much to our land that the pollinators are really running out, or not running out, but they have less to choose from to actually eat from and also to lay their eggs in. And we're gonna talk about that. 3350, and you'll get four of these. We're gonna give you one in orange, one in pink, one in yellow, and one in white. And joining me right now are the Walleen family. It sounds like it should be, you know, like some, uh, like you're the circus stars, you know, the Wally yeah. family. But That's anyway, right. we have Stephanie, we Derek, and Devin joining us tonight in this hour. So, Stephanie, hi, how are you? I'm well, Mary Beth. How are you doing? Terrific. Great to have you Good. with us. So, Thanks. explain kind of what I, t you know, pick up from what I was saying about yes. the need for pollinating plants. Absolutely. You know, you were perfectly right. But specifically, what the milkweed is all about is the monarch butterfly. So, you know, over the last couple of decades, for various reasons, unfortunately, the monarch butterfly population has decreased upwards of 80%. Um, and, you know, the, the biggest reason is that there just isn't enough native milkweed out in the world anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, because they don't have enough milkweed, unfortunately, the population has really taken a hit. So by planting this collection of our butterfly bouquet, Mary Beth, whether you have an apartment, in a state, you know, um, maybe you don't have any any room or any backyard space, but just a balcony. You can do your part in literally saving the monarch butterfly population because this is the only plant that the monarch butterflies, like you see here, they're going to lay their eggs on the bottom side of these leaves, and then they're going to, you know, grow into the caterpillars who then eat the leaves. They'll go through their beautiful chrysalis, and then they're going to emerge that monarch butterfly. So this is truly the only plant that they eat and that they lay their eggs on. And that's Sandra Bennett, one of our other yes. hosts. And she had taken these, and this was last summer and um, or last spring, and she literally helped these butterflies, you that's know, right. and she just raves about it. And mm -hmm. I was so interested to find out about these because that, like I'm a kind of a novice gardener. My husband's a very, very good gardener. But okay. tell me, where should these be planted what, do they need a lot of sun Absolutely. or not and that type of thing? Totally. You know, this is one of our, you know, not only is it the most important plant that I think we sell here on QVC and QVC2, but it is one of the easiest as well. So this is one of the four plants that you will be receiving. This collection, it's really special too, Mary Beth, because it includes all four colors that you see here, orange, yellow, pink, and a very hard to find white. Mm -hmm. um, but these plants, they really love, you know, at least a half day of sun. The more sun, the better. So, you know, plant them in the sunny parts of your yard, but even, you know, plant them out kind of back in the very back sides of your yard where maybe you're not gonna enjoy them, but the monarch butterflies can have a feast all summer long. Wow. And you know, what's great about this butterfly bouquet, we called it that because traditional milkweed, the native milkweed, because it is native to North America, it grows upwards of seven to eight feet, Mary Beth. And so wow. it's not the most pretty plant. This collection has been hybridized to be a more dwarf plant. It's only gonna grow about three feet tall, like you see here, this right. gorgeous mass planting of the pink. And so not only is it going to be beautiful for you and a feast for your eyes, it's a true feast for the monarch butterflies and mm -hmm. other pollinators. But more specifically, you know, this is the only plant that the monarch butterfly, as you see there, the only one she's going to go and lay her eggs on. And then once those eggs hatch into the caterpillar, this is the only leaf, the only plant, as you see here on the left, that's actually my very own photo. I had, you know, upwards of 50 caterpillars at one time this summer. It was such a beautiful wow. thing to see. Um, and then they all emerged into monarch butterflies. So you can truly do like a good deed by planting this collection and we can all do it. It's winter hardy down to like negative 30 degrees. So wow. even those of us who live almost to the Canadian border, yeah. anyone can plant this collection. That's so good to know. Should mm -hmm. I, with the four plants that I'm getting, one each yeah. of orange, pink, yellow, and white, should I put them all like in a row in the ground? Or what if I put one of each of those in four pots? Absolutely, that's can a great idea. You know, maybe you wanna have little um, plants dotted around your deck, for example, so that mm -hmm. the monarch butterflies kind of hop around and you can really enjoy them during your summer barbecues. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. 
but because they are super winter hardy perennials, if you want to plant them directly in the ground as well, you can mm -hmm. do that. I would just recommend giving them, you know, about two to three feet of space when you plant okay. them so that once they're fully grown, they're not kind of squished together. They still have enough room yeah. to grow. That's a good idea. Um, now, here's the other thing. When we get these home, kind of explain to everybody, especially if they're new to shop plants here totally. at QVC, is um, first of all, every all the plants, all the live plants are free shipping and handling. Yes, And absolutely. they're all tonight on three easy payments. Now, if you use your Q card, you can put them on five easy payments. But when do they ship and how do we know when to plant them? Absolutely. Well, we know where you live based on your zip code. So the plants are going to be shipped directly to your doorstep so you don't have to worry about going to the nurseries and you know going and seeing empty shelves they're going to be shipped directly to your door when it's the right time in your area of the country to be planted mary beth and all of our plants come with these beautiful growing guides that my brother devin hand writes every single one yeah so i know that they're chock full of good information and you know a couple of you know questions maybe you don't you can't remember something that i say don't worry because it's going to come with this growing guide and really just help you set up um set you up for success this summer. Mm -hmm. By the way, I always say keep those growing guides in like a uh, shoebox or something oh, yeah. like that because you never want to lose those because especially with perennials, it would be so great even if you had to sell your place to say to them, hey, these are the flowers that are in the yard and the, he, oh, this yeah. is how you take care of them. And I mean, that's just like, nice courtesy to the people Absolutely. who would be buying your place. So the mm -hmm. fact is, is hang on to those growing guides as much as you can. Here's the thing I always say too, when they arrive, you'll know when they come because the boxes will say live plants. And right. so you know, don't just let them sit in that box. Poor little things they want out, Absolutely. they want light, they want water, yes. but that's when you want to plant them. If you can't plant them right away, like within that day or so, then at least get them out of the box and let them see some light and get and give, give them, them a, a drink. Bit of water too. Yeah, give them yep. a drink. They've been traveling. <laughs> They're thirsty. Exactly. <laughs> All right, now here's something else.